Jahannam Arabic, jam in Islam refers to an afterlife place of punishment for evildoers. The punishments are carried in accordance with the degree of evil one has done during his life. In Quran, Jahannam is also referred as al-nar al-nar, the fire, jahim jim, blazing fire, hutama tempt, that which breaks to pieces, hawiya hawit, the abyss, ladtha li, sar seer, the blaze. Sakar Squar, and also the names of different gates to hell. Suffering in hell is both physical and spiritual, and varies according to the sins of the condemned. As described in the Quran, hell has seven levels each one more severe than the one above it, seven gates each for a specific group of sinners, a blazing fire, boiling water, and the tree of Zakum. Not all Muslims and scholars agree whether hell is an eternal destination or whether some or even all of the condemned will eventually be forgiven and allowed to enter paradise. Sources Most of how Muslims picture and think about Jahannam comes from the Quran, according to scholar Ina Thomason, who found nearly 500 references to Jahannam – Hell using a variety of names in the Quran. Jahannam appears in the Quran 77 times, al Jahim 23 times. Quran The Quran uses a number of different terms and phrases to refer to hell. Al-Nar the fire is used 125 times, Jahannam 77 times, Jahim blazing flames 26 times. One collection of Quranic descriptions of hell include rather specific indications of the tortures of the fire. Flames that crackle and roar, fierce boiling waters scorching, wind and black smoke roaring and boiling as if it would burst with rage. Its wretched inhabitants sigh and wail. Their scorched skins are constantly exchanged for new ones so that they can taste the torment anew. Drink festering water and though death appears on all sides they cannot die. They are linked together in chains of seventy cubits, wearing pitch for clothing and fire on their faces, have boiling water that will be poured over their heads, melting their insides as well as their skins, and hooks of iron to drag them back. Should they try to escape, their remorseful admissions of wrongdoing and pleading for forgiveness are in vain. The description of Jahannam as a place of blazing fire appears in almost every verse in the Quran describing hell. Jahannam is described as being located below heaven, having seven gates, each for a specific group or at least a different portion or party of sinners. The Quran also mentions wrongdoers having degrees or ranks according to their deeds which scholar believe refers to the seven gates. The one mention of levels of hell is that hypocrites will be found in its very bottom. The Quran mentions three different sources of food in hell. Dari, a dry desert plant that is full of thorns and fails to relieve hunger or sustain a person 88 Gizlan, which is only mentioned once in 69 which states that it is the only nourishment in hell. Zakum is mentioned three times. Hadiths The Hadiths the corpus of the reports of the teachings, deeds and sayings of the Islamic prophet Muhammad introduce punishments, reasons and revelations not mentioned in the Quran. In both Quranic verses and Hadiths, the fire Jahannam is a gruesome place of punishment that is always contrasted with Jannah, the garden, paradise, whatever characteristic. The garden offered, the fire usually offered the opposite conditions. Several hadith describes a part of hell that is extremely cold rather than hot, known as Zamarir. Eschatological manuals In addition to the Quran and hadith are eschatological manuals. These were written after the other two sources and developed descriptions of Jahannam in more deliberate ways. While the Quran and Hadith tend to describe punishments that unbelievers are forced to give themselves, the manuals illustrate external and more dramatic punishment, through devils, scorpions, and snakes. Manuals dedicated solely to the subject of Jahannam include Ibn Abi al Dunya's Sifat al Nar, and al Makdizi's Dikr al Nar. Other manuals such as texts by al Ghazali and the 12th century scholar Qadi Iyad dramatize life in the fire and present. New punishments, different types of sinners, and the appearance of a multitude of devils. 
to exhort the faithful to piety. His hell has a structure with a specific place for each type of sinners. Al Ghazali, in his book The Remembrance of Death and the Afterlife, describes and discusses the wrongdoer and graphic, sometimes violent scenes of Jahannam. According to theologian Al Ghazali, afterlife will start with the day of the arising and a trumpet blast, which will wake the dead from their graves. The perspiration. When all created beings, including men, angels, jinn, devils and animals gather and sweat unshaded from the sun—will follow. Sinners and unbelievers will suffer and sweat longer on this day, which lasts for 50,000 years. God will judge each soul, accept no excuses, and examine every act and intention—no matter how small. It is believed those whose good deeds outweigh the bad will be assigned to Jannah heaven, and those whose bad deeds outweigh the good to Jahannam. Finally the souls will traverse over hellfire via the bridge of Sarat. For sinners, it is believed the bridge will be thinner than hair and sharper than the sharpest sword, impossible to walk on without falling below to arrive at their destination. According to Lior Halevi, between the moment of death and the time of their burial ceremony, the spirit of a deceased Muslim takes a quick journey to heaven and hell, where it beholds visions of the bliss and torture awaiting humanity at the end of days." In The Soul's Journey After Death, Ibn Qayyim al-Jaziyah, a theologian in the 14th century, writes explicitly of punishments faced by sinners and unbelievers in Jahannam. These are directly related to the wrongdoer's earthly transgressions. Concepts of Jahannam Jahannam is depicted as an abyss with scorching winds and the as Sarat bridge above. Its gates are guardianed by Malik and his subordinated angels. From the depth of Jahannam grows Zakum a tree with fruits looking like the heads of demons. Sinners will be tormented by the Zabaniyah. Quran 4–168 and Quran 37–23 talk of a road that leads to hell. Eternal or temporary The ulama were not in agreement on whether abodes in hell last forever or not. Several verses in the Quran mention the eternal nature of hell or both heaven and hell. Quran 7:23, the damned will linger in hell for ages. Two verses in the Quran 6 and 11 emphasize that consignment to hell is horrible and eternal, but include the caveat. Except as God or your Lord wills it. Some scholars considered this an escape from the eternity of hell. Quran 10 to 107 suggests that Jahannam will be destroyed some day, so that its inhabitants may either be rehabilitated or cease to exist. The common belief among Muslims is that duration in hell is temporary for Muslims, but not for others. Thus, combining the concept of an eternal hell with that of the Christian Catholic concept of purgatory. Sentience Some scholars like al-Ghazali and the 13th-century Muslim scholar al-Qurtabai describes hell as a gigantic sentient being, rather than a place. In Paradise and Hellfire in Imam al-Qurtabai, Qurtabai writes, "...on the day of judgment, hell will be brought with 70,000 rains. A single rain will be held by 70,000 angels." Based on verse 67 to 7 and verse 50 to 30, Jahannam inhales and has breaths. Islamicity notes the animalistic nature of the fire in Quranic verse 25 to 12. When the hellfire sees them from a distant place, they will hear its fury and roaring. According to a hadith, God will ask Jahannam if it is full, and Jahannam answers, "Are there any more to come?" Topic. Sunni concept of Jahannam Sunnism traditionally divides Jahannam analog to heaven into seven stages. According to one common tradition the layers of hell are 1 a fire for sinners among the Muslims 2 inferno interim for the sinner among the Christians 3 provisional destination for sinners among the Jewish 4 the burning fire for renegades 5 a place for witches and fortune tellers 6 furnace for the disbelievers 7 a bottomless abyss for hypocrites like the pharaoh and people who disbelieves after Isa's table or muslims who are outwardly believers but inwardly infidels another common tradition divides seven earths 
identified with hell, into the following 1 a dim surface, inhabited by mankind and jinn 2 Basset plain, the prison of winds, from where the winds come from 3 Thackle region of distress, the antechamber of hell, in which dwell men with the mouth of a dog, the ears of a goat and the cloven hoof of an ox 4 Bata place of torrents, a valley through which flows a stream of boiling sulfur to torment the wicked. The dweller in this valley have no eyes and in place of feet, have wings. 5. Hain region of adversity, in which serpents of enormous size devour the infidels. 6. Massica, Sijin store or dungeon, the office where sins are recorded and where souls are tormented by scorpions of the size of mules. 7. As Sakar place of burning and Athara place of damp and great cold the home of Iblis, who is chained in the midst of the rebel angels, his hand fastened one in front of and the other behind him, except when set free by God to chastise his demons. <laughs> Mystic concept of Jahannam Muslim mystics, just like non-mystics, take Jahannam to be a place where sinners in this world will be punished, but they have provided various characterizations of the notion of the Jahannam. Historically speaking, Sufi views develop from the fear of God to the love of God, they emphasize the interior of the Sharia as well as its exterior. Sufism was finally developed into the theoretical mysticism which cultivated in the theories of Ibn Arabi and his followers. According to Ibn Arabi, the hell and the heaven refer, in fact, to distance from, and proximity to, God, respectively. The hell which is home to wrongdoers is their conception of their distance from God, and the painful punishment and humility is that of distance. Such a distance is caused by one's indulgence in their natural desires and the illusion of things other than God as existent. But such a distance is only illusory, since everything is a form of the degrees of the divine existence, and thus, everything other than God is but illusion. According to Ibn Arabi, the hell and the heaven are psychological states of the soul manifested after its separation from the body. In later centuries, Sufis did not even find it acceptable for one to ask for the heaven in the hope of meeting God or to do good in fear of hell. Ahmadiyya <laughs> concept of Jahannam According to Ahmadiyya Islam, afterlife places are images of man's own spiritual life during lifetime, the fire a manifestation of his sins. The main purpose on Jahannam is therefore regarded to purge man from his evil deeds. Punishment therefore exists for perpetual spiritual advancement of human. Muslims and non-Muslims both may enter or avoid hell depending on their deeds. Hadith Hadith literature give expanded details and descriptions of Jahannam. For example Jahannam is perceived to be so deep that if a stone were thrown into it, it would fall for 70 years before reaching the bottom. According to one calculation this would make it over 190 million kilometers deep, a far greater distance than the distance between the Sun and Earth. The breadth of each of Hell's walls is equivalent to a distance covered by a walking journey of 40 years. Malik in Hadith quotes Muhammad as saying that the fire of Jahannam was seventy times greater than fire on earth. He also described that fire as, "...blacker than tar". In Book 87 Hadith 155, "...interpretation of dreams", of Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad talked of angels each with, "...a mace of iron", who guarded hell, and then expanded on the Quran's discourse describing Jahannam by recounting it as a place that was built inside like a well and it had side posts like those of a well, and beside each post there was an angel carrying an iron mace. I saw therein many people hanging upside down with iron chains, and I recognized therein some men from the Quraysh." Some prominent people in, or destined to arrive in, hell mentioned in the Hadith and Quran are, Faran viz, the Pharaoh of the Exodus, mentioned in Surah Yunus specifically Q10-90-92, the wives of Na and Lut mentioned in Surah at Tarim, specifically Q, 66-10, and Abu Lahab and his wife who were contemporaries and enemies of Muhammad and mentioned in Surah al-Masad, specifically Q, 111. According to Muhammad, the majority of the inhabitants of hell will be women, other people mentioned in hadith include, but are not limited to, the mighty, the proud and the haughty. According to one hadith, out of every 1,000 people entering into the afterlife, 999 of them will end up in the fire. Sahih Muslim quotes Muhammad as saying that suicides would reside in Jahannam forever. 
According to hadith collector Mawada Imam Malik, Imam Malik, Muhammad said, "...truly a man utters words to which he attaches no importance, and by them he falls into the fire of Jahannam." Al-Bukhari in Book 72-834 added to the list of dwellers in Jahannam. The people who will receive the severest punishment from Allah will be the picture makers. Use of utensils made of precious metals could also land its users in Jahannam. A person who drinks from a silver vessel brings the fire of Jahannam into his belly. As could starving a cat to death, a woman was tortured and was put in hell because of a cat which she had kept locked till it died of hunger. At least one hadith indicates the importance of faith in avoiding hell, stating, No one will enter hell in whose heart is an Adam's weight of faith. <inaudible> Religious comparison <inaudible> <inaudible> Christianity <inaudible> Bible Some of the Quranic parables describing the sufferings in hell resemble those of the Christian New Testament. The Bible states, And he gave a cry and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, so that he may put the end of his finger in water and put it on my tongue, for I am cruelly burning in this flame. Luke 16 verse 24 and in addition, there is a deep division fixed between us and you, so that those who might go from here to you are not able to do so, and no one may come from you to us. Luke chapter 16 verse 26. Unhappy are you who are full of food now, for you will be in need. Unhappy are you who are laughing now, for you will be crying in sorrow. Luke chapter 6 verse 25 resemble the Quran stating, And the companions of the fire will call to the companions of paradise. Pour upon us some water or from whatever Allah has provided you. Quote, they will say, Indeed, Allah has forbidden them both to the disbelievers. 1750, and between them will be a partition, and on its elevations are men who recognize all by their mark. And they call out to the companions of paradise, Peace be upon you. They have not yet entered it, but they long intensely. 746. So let them laugh a little and then weep much as recompense for what they used to earn. 9 to 82 the book of revelation describes a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death which most christians believe to be a description of hell comparable to jahannam as the fire quote dot while the quran describes jahannam as having seven levels each for different sins the bible as regards the issue of levels speaks of the lowest hell shoal quote dot it also refers to a Bottomless pit, comparable to the lowest layer of Jahannam in most Sunni traditions. Topic: <laughs> Christian tradition. The hell often depicted in Christian culture as the seat of the devil. Sources differ as to whether Jahannam is also. Yahya Emmerich describes it as not the headquarters of Shaitan, Satan, and his devils, as is the popular idea in Western culture but simply a place created by God to punish sinners. On the other hand, in the al-Sirah of Ibn Ishaq, the devil may at least be thought as governing hell until the Day of Judgment. However, even if Iblis is assumed as the temporarily ruler of Jahannam, his reign depends on the power of God, Jahannam is presided over by guardians Kazana and harsh, severe. Angels, like the Islamic concept of hell, non-biblical Christian-based writings, such as Dante's Inferno, speak of hell divided into multiple circles topic <laughs> christian liberalism in modern times some christians and christian denominations such as universalism have rejected the concept of hell as a place of suffering and torment for sinners on the grounds that it is incompatible with a loving god there are also symbolic and more merciful interpretations of hell among muslims Muslims Mohanad Korchid and Fahim Yonis write that since the Quran states that God has prescribed to himself mercy and for him whose scales of good deeds are light, hell will be his mother. Suffering in Jahannam is not a product of vengeance and punishment, but a temporary phenomenon as the sinner is transformed in the process of confronting the truth about themselves. 
However, this has not been the common view of Muslims. Christian evangelist Phil Parshall, who spent several decades observing and writing about Muslims in Asia, writes that he never met a Muslim who has attempted to undercut the bluntness and severity of their doctrine of hell. Topic: <inaudible> Judeo-Islamic sources. Arabic texts written by Jews in Judeo-Arabic script particularly those which are identified with the Israeliate genre in the study of Hadith also feature descriptions of Jahannam or Jahanaham. These seem to have been strongly influenced by the Islamic environment in which they were composed, and may be considered as holding many of the same concepts as those today identified with Islamic eschatology. A Judeo-Arabic version of a popular narrative known as the Story of the Skull whose earliest version is attributed to Ka'ab al-Abr offers a detailed picture of the concept of Jahannam. Here, Malik al-Mat and a number of sixty angels seize the soul of the dead and begin torturing him with fire and iron hooks. Two black angels named Nakir and Nakir identified with Munkar and Nakir in Islamic eschatology strike the dead with a whip of fire and take him to the lowest level of Jahannam. Then, they order the earth to swallow and crush the dead inside its womb, saying, "'Seize him and take revenge, because he has stolen all his wealth and worshipped others than him.'" Following this, the dead is brought before the dais of God where a herald calls for throwing the dead into Jahannam. There he is put in shackles sixty cubits long and into a leather sackcloth full of snakes and scorpions. The Judeo-Arabic legend in question explains that the dead is set free from the painful prerogatory after twenty-four years. In a final quote alluding to Isaiah 58.8, the narrative states that, "...nothing will help man on the last day except good and loving actions, deeds of giving charity to widows, orphans, the poor and the unfortunate." Some Jewish sources such as Jeremiel provide descriptive detail of hell-like places, divided into multiple levels, usually Sheol, which is translated as a grave or pit, is the place where humans descend upon death. <laughs> Zoroastrianism Like Zoroastrianism, Islam holds that on Judgment Day all souls will pass over a bridge over hell as Surat in Islam, Chinvit bridge in Zoroastrianism which those destined for hell will find too narrow and fall below into their new abode. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism In case of a finite hell, as a circulation of beginning and reset, the cosmology resembles to a Hinduistic notion of an eternal cosmic process of generation, decay and destruction. <inaudible> Buddhism Some descriptions of Jahannam resemble Buddhist descriptions of Naraka from Mahayana sutras in regard of destroying inhabitants of hell physically, while their consciousness still remains and after once the body is destroyed, it will regenerate again, thus the punishment will repeat. However according to Buddhism belief, the inhabitants are able to gain good karma and in certain circumstances leave hell again. See also Jehenna Barzakh Shoal Hell and Purgatory Jana Salvation Sin Afterlife Sijin References Notes Citations Topic. Books and journal articles Ghazali, Abu Hamid Muhammad On the Remembrance of Death and the Afterlife. Winter, T.J. Cambridge, UK, Islamic Texts Society. Kaltner, John, ed. 2011. Introducing the Quran, for today's reader. Fortress Press. pp. 228–234. Retrieved 2 May 2015. Rustamji, Narina. The Garden and the Fire Heaven and Hell in Islamic Culture. Columbia University Press. Retrieved 25 December 2014.